Hello and welcome back. This episode I will be going over the stats and the AI. First off, you want to right click on the NPC that you're working on, go to stats. The health, that will determine how much health it has. Now, if it has 20, that means it has 10 hearts. If you put it at 200, that means it has 100 hearts. Whatever, you, whatever number in there, you just divide it by 2, and that's how many hearts it will have. So even if you put it by 5, it will only have 2.5 hearts. Now, keep in mind, the Ender Dragon has 150. And the Wither, I believe, has 200. Now, let's go over to aggro range. If you, depending on if you set the NPC, which I'll talk about later, just bear with me. If you have it to where the NPC attacks you or another person or another enemy, depending on how much the aggro range is, if it's 16 blocks away, it'll go and attack it. If you put it at 1, it probably won't attack anything unless it gets very close. Now, this button right over here it means it's a normal NPC. If you switch it to undead, it means it's more weak to whatever it's called. <laughs> it's not Bane of Arthropods. You know what I mean. It's whatever the other uh, thing was. If you switch it to Arthropod, it means it's weak to Bane of Arthropod. And then it's normal again. Undead is Smite. I finally figured it out. Alright. For the respawn time, you can either set it to yes, and then you go over here. Now, you cannot put it as minutes. This is how many seconds. If you were to put it as 20 seconds, you would just leave it like it is. If you wanted to put it at a minute, you leave, you put it at 60. 2 minutes is 120, and so on. Now, if you do not want him to spawn at all, you just switch it to either to no. Now, if you wanted to spawn at day or night, you would just put it as how many minutes or seconds until it spawns during the night, but it will only spawn during the night. Now, if it dies, you can either choose whether to hide the body or to yes. If you do, if you do kill it, it'll still show up on the ground. If you have it set to no, I mean if you have it set to yes, the body will disappear. Although, I will say this now. With or without it on, if you do start attacking it where, right where it dies, your item, your weapon, will still start losing durability. That is one glitch that I've noticed. Melee options. In here, this is where you set the strength of your melee of how strong you want him to attack. 5 will be set as 5 hearts. If you set it as 10, that'll be 10 hearts and he'll be able to one-shot you without if you don't have any armor. If you set it at 100, that means he'll, he, be, he will be able to sh one-shot you if you had full diamond without any enchantments. Melee range will tell you how far you can attack somebody. So if it's, at, if it's set at 2, he can attack somebody 2 blocks away. Melee speed, that will tell you how fast they can attack the person. Knockback, it should be obvious. If, you, if they hit you, you get knocked back a certain amount, but knockback only goes up to 4. Any higher, and it will not work. <coughs> Effects. Um, you can either set it to fire, you can how you can set it to how long the fire will last on the person that attacks. You can have it as poison. Say again, you can do with the time except for the amplified means that the more he will attack you, the more time will be added onto it. Same with hunger, weakness, slowness, nausea. And nausea is where your screen starts like wobbling and everything. Blindness. And it will work with wither as well ranged options. These will not work correctly unless you have your character with an item in its slot in its inventory, which we'll talk about later in the next video. This is how accurate the person will be when it shoots at you. 
most skeletons are at 90%. Actually, all skeletons are at 90% range. That's how far it can shoot. Fire delay is how long it has to wait until it fires again. Delay variance. Well, it's pretty much telling you how long it has to wait before it's going to shoot again after the first time. It's basically the same thing as fire delay, but it has to deal with lag as well. Fire rate is how fast it can shoot. Bur and that's with the burst count as well. If you want it to set it to 5 or 4. I gotta make this thing neutral first. Stupid too many items glitch. Hmm. Well, it's just a weird glitch. Oh, it's... never mind, I forgot. The reason why, if you do plan on doing this on an old map that you've already did, did uh custom NPCs, you're going to have to mess with the uh, faction settings, which I'll talk about later. But anyway, once you, if I was to attack the person, I may have to do this. So stupid. Anyway, if you were attack to attack him, he would shoot three arrows at you in each burst. If I can get back to it. The fire rate is how fast he will shoot those three arrows. If you set it to one, he'll shoot it like tch -tch -tch, like that fast. Sound effects, like I just did. He changed the way you have to go through sounds. You have to either go through here and find what you want. If you don't find the certain one, if you do want like a magic spell that he that he added, you have to go up again, go to custom NPCs, magic. And there you go. That's how you do it. And you're also play it, you're able to play the sound. If you go back up again into Minecraft, this is where you can get all the sounds, which I'll discuss later in the advanced. Projectile type. This is how strong the... how much damage it will deal on you. 4 means 4 hearts. 10 means 10 hearts. Punch is just like knockback. If you do get hit it by it, you'll get knocked back a certain amount of squares. The size of the little arrow that he shoots out, you can go between 1 and 10. The speed of the item that, it sh that he shoots out, if you have it as 1, it goes very slow. And if you have an NPC at a certain big size, it will not work, because it'll just hit himself. Has gravity. This is where you can either have yes to where it just lobs down like an arrow. If you has no, it'll just keep going straight, just like a gas uh, bomb. If you have it as constant, means just like the gas. Accelerate means it'll go slow at first, and it'll get faster and faster over time. Explodes. If you have it as no, it does not make any explosion sounds. If you have yes, it will make the explosion sound, but it does not do anything else. Have it as small, it does fire. Medium, it does a lot more fire. And on large, it does a large area of fire. Again, just like melee, you can choose the effects if you want fire. Five, five seconds of fire. You can amplify the poison, all that such. Trail type is... When the person shoots the arrow, there will be particles behind it. You can choose either smoke, portal, redstone, and such. Now, if it's not night time, you can choose whether it glows or not. Now, for resistance, you can choose whether... If it's all on zero, that means it can happen. If you have it on 100% knockback, it'll do double whatever it was. Same with arrows. So, if, if I have a power 4 bow and I shoot him, and it's at negative 100%, it does double the damage. Now, if I have it at 100%, he cannot be knocked back. If I have arrows, he does not get affected by the arrow. So basically, if you have an NPC just like this, you cannot kill him. 
Unless you get into lava or something. Walk speed. This will tell you how fast he walks normally without when he's not attacking. Immune to fire, which what I just said about resistance, you can set it to where he doesn't get he doesn't die to fire. Can drown. Yes or no. Does his health regenerate? Yes or no. Does he burn in the sun like a zombie? Yes or no. And does he take fall damage? No. Yes. Now the AI gets a little bit more complicated at times, but once you figure this out, you'll get it down really easily. As soon as your NPC finds an enemy, you can either retaliate, panic, or retreat, or do nothing. Does your NPC avoid water? Yes or no, which you'd want to put yes, because I don't see why you'd want him just to walk right into water. Um, like the villagers that that's in vanilla, you can either make it to where they open doors, or they don't do anything, or you can have them to where they break doors like zombies. After your NPC moves away, you can either choose to whether you, to make it to where your NPC will teleport back to where it started at. Can your NPC swim if you do have this off, or if he does fall into water? Leap at target, it's basically what a normal person would do. Just jump at them like that. But it has like a certain delay to it, so you can only do it once. And then does it again. That's all it is. Shelter from, it's basically like how villagers hide from the uh, day. Either darkness or sunlight. Can fire in direction, yes or no. This right here will make your NPC, if you want your NPC to be able to see you before it attacks, you'd have to put it on yes. If you're in, if you're in range of your NPC being able to attack, it will just walk towards right towards you without having to see you. And use range attacks. You can either have it to always if it's range, or you can set it to where when it's when you're close enough, he'll start meleeing you. Which you can set the distance of how close you have to be, or when ready. Can sprint, which is when he finds you, he'll sprint after you. Tactical variant rush is like just running after the person. Dodging is when He'll start moving a lot to dodge any of your attacks or arrows. Surround is what a creeper does. He'll come up close to you and just walk in a circle. Ambush. I can't really tell you much other than he'll just like... He'll do what a creeper does. He'll hide behind things and get closer to you and closer to you. That's all it is. Or actually that's stalk. Ambush, I have no idea what that does. Now, for standing... As you can see, my little NPC name column is just normal standing. You can either make him wander, which he'll just walk around. But you can set the walking range that you want him to go around. And you can have him on a moving, moving path, which if you want to have him on a moving path, you need the NPC pather. You click on him. You have a registered column to your NPC pather. Now you just click spots that you want him to move to. Now from here, you go into here. You can either have it looping, so where you'll go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Or if you have it on backtracking, if you had four spots... I forgot I was still in there. If he was standing right here and you have him on backtracking, he would go to here, then here, then here, then he'd go back. That's all it is. Looping is where he just goes in a circle. That's all it is. When he's standing, you're able to make him offset by a few pixels if you wanted to. You can also have him rotate body, or no rotation at all, unless you have want him to look at a certain direction. Or have you just look at you the whole time? Or just have his head rotate? Now, 
when he's just standing, you can either have him sitting, lying down, sneaking, which is the same as standing, so you're able to make him like stalk you or look around or only make it where his head looks around. Dancing, which is just like the dance mod. And aiming, which is just like how your character aims with a bow. And that is it just for the stats and AI. I will get back to you on the next episode where I go over inventory and adding textures to your game. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this.